Hello, and welcome back to another episode of the Bible in One Year with the Preacher's Husband. Today, we're talking about Leviticus chapter 22 and 23, and we're going to dive right in. Chapter 22 is talking about priests and their food and acceptable sacrifices. Now, since the priests led in corporate worship, they had to be ceremonially um, pure. The sacrifices that they brought also had to be unblemished in order to be acceptable to the Lord. In other words, they couldn't just go out and find some roadkill and throw it up on the grill. That's not how it worked. They, they had certain types of animals they had to use, and they had to be in certain physical conditions. It couldn't just be um, a three-legged goat. It, couldn't be, it, had to have, it had to be a healthy, um, practically perfect animal. Now we get to chapter 23 and it's talking about holy days. Holy days. Now God set aside a sacred period. Now let's look at some holy days here. These holy days are sacred periods that we're talking about. He set these aside to include festivals and other holy days to give the covenant community rest from everyday life. Now, these special days would also help them remember the acts of creation, deliverance, protection, and provision. Now, some of those holy days that were mentioned in this chapter were Sabbath, keeping the Sabbath holy, a holy day, that day of rest, the Passover, the festival of unleavened bread, and of course, the Day of Atonement, or Yom Kippur, as they call it now, and the festival of shelters. Now, I got to thinking of holy days. I got to thinking of holidays as well and what the difference is. And I got to thinking about Israel today, the country of Israel today. It's not just a religion. It, the Israelites are the Israelis now. Only about three quarters of them are Jewish as the Israelites were here. And... Israel, the country, and Israel, the people, are a mixed blend now. It's not the same. But in Israel, they are still a Jewish nation. They are a nation that includes Judaism as their national religion. Well, the United States is a little different than that. Have you ever heard of that concept of separation of church and state? Well... It's not exactly how it works in the United States. A lot of people are under the impression that we have this thing called separation of church and state, but it's not really like that. The church and the state aren't exactly 100% independent of each other, but they're not one and the same either. Okay, We don't have a set national religion, like the religion of the United States is not Christianity, but it's not Islam either, and it's not whatever hinduism we don't have a set religion because we have freedom of religion but in a 1952 case about separation of church and state the supreme court upheld a position in the case of zorak versus clausen and what this was was the new york city schools were permitting their school students to be released during the day to go and worship to go to religious centers for religious instruction or for devotional exercises and the court said that's fine you can do that but people were up in an uproar saying that's not separation of church and state but here's what the judge said the judge says this the first amendment however does not say that in every respect there shall be a separation of church and state hmm. rather it studiously defines the manner, the specific ways, in which there shall be no concert or union or dependency one on the other. That is the common sense of the matter. Otherwise, the state and religion would be aliens to each other. They would become hostile, suspicious, and even unfriendly towards each other. Municipalities would not be permitted to render police or fire protection to religious groups. So if somebody had a shooting at a church, guess what? The police wouldn't show up if we had pure, total, 100% separation of church and state. Because we don't. The government can aid and assist religious groups. And religious groups can aid and assist 
the government. There is not a complete 100% divided separation there. There's just not. It would not work. Policemen who helped parishioners into their places of worship would be violating the Constitution if that were the case. Prayers in our legislative halls, the appeals to the Almighty, and the messages of the chief executive. In other words, the president would not even be allowed to pray if we had separation of church and state. It would be against the Constitution if that's what that was the case, but it's not. And here's what really made me reminded me of this case was this right here. The proclamation making Thanksgiving Day a holiday or a holy day. It would not have happened, it could not have happened, and it would have been illegal had we had 100% separation of church and state. Hmm. The proclamation making Thanksgiving Day a holiday. Now, in some states, the words, so help me God, are already being eliminated in our courtrooms. Some they're still used, some they're not. But these and all other references to the Almighty that run through our laws, our public rituals, our ceremonies, would be flouting the First Amendment. He goes on to say, A fastidious atheist or agnostic could even object to the supplication with which the court opens each session. God save the United States and this honorable court. That's how they open their, their sessions each time. We are religious people, he says, and our institutions presuppose a supreme being. When the state encourages religious instruction or cooperates with religious authorities by adjusting the schedule of public events to sectarian needs, it follows the best of our traditions, for it then respects the religious nature of our people and accommodates the public service to their spiritual needs. To hold that it may not, to hold that it may, to hold that it may not, would be to find in the Constitution a requirement that the government show a callous indifference to religious groups. That would be preferring those who believe in no religion over those who do believe in a religion. We find no constitutional requirement makes it necessary for government to be hostile to religion and to throw its weight against the efforts to widen the scope of religious influence. The government must remain neutral when it comes to competition between sex. We cannot read into the Bill of Rights such a philosophy of hostility to religion. I found that very interesting. That was an awesome court case. And that just all these holy days talk just really kind of set me into a little spin on there, on that little separation of church and state thing. It's not there. It, we are separated to an extent, but not completely. We're just not reliant upon each other is really what it boils down to. Um, I hope this has touched you. If it has, please click the like button, the subscribe button, and of course click the little jingle bell so you can be notified the next time I upload a video, which will be tomorrow. And we did chapter 22 and 23 today of Leviticus. We will do chapter 24 and 25 tomorrow. So I hope to see you tomorrow for another episode of the Bible in one year with the preacher's husband. There's something I skipped. Be sure to put it in the comments section and let's talk about it. See you tomorrow.